Sometimes, when I'm editing my videos, I just want a way to show something clearly from all angles without my hands getting in the way. So I'm going to solve that problem with a turntable, sort of like this. And here is a preview of the results. This is the design that I've come up with. First, it looks pretty plain, and that's the whole point. It isn't the focus of what we're recording. It needs to be almost as if it isn't there at all. If I hide the top piece, we can see the internals. Essentially, the whole thing is just one big bearing with the ends covered over, but more on that later. This is a small lever arm switch. This red section here is printed and provides an interface from the outside of the table to the switch that connects the servo to the battery. This is a battery holder, an 18650 lithium battery. Over here, we will install a small circuit board that will be used for battery charging. Here we have a continuous rotation servo motor that drives the tabletop. On the underside of the top, we have a bevel gear, whose corresponding partner is attached to the servo motor. This big washer in the middle holds the top and bottom together so the top doesn't fall off. This is the best feature in my opinion. This is the base of the turntable and this is the top. And this item here is a bearing cage. Essentially a thin ring with holes for ball bearings. So if we add a number of ball bearings to this ring and sandwich it here like this, we have in fact made a 200mm diameter bearing to support our turntable for a very low cost. First, let's start with the lever arm switch. It's secured with a couple of M2 bolts that tap into the print. It doesn't quite actuate the switch. I'll just nudge the switch closer as there is clearance in the mounting holes. Now it's switching positively. I'll just glue this little grip onto the outside so it's easy to switch on and off. The bevel gear for the servo is also secured with some M2 screws that tap right into the print. This is how the servo and bevel gear drive the top of the turntable. Now to fit the servo motor to the base with some M3 bolts. There is a nice channel printed here to secure the wire for the servo motor. The battery holder can simply be hot glued in place. The battery charging circuit board simply slots in here and provides a USB-C connection for charging. The circuit design is very simple. And finally, to test everything. Somehow, the simplest circuit possible doesn't work. 
so let's try another battery. At this point I was thinking maybe my continuous rotation servo needs some pulse width modulated signal or a high low signal on the control wire. So I tried adding a resistor for current control and tried connecting it to the negative side of the battery but this still didn't work. So I decided to open the servo motor and have a look inside. I ended up just removing the control circuit board and wire the motor directly to the input wires. But my camera died while doing this. And now it works perfectly. For something so simple, it's quite satisfying. I just need to add a threaded insert into the turntable top to secure the retaining washer. Almost done now. There are two magnets to install here so I can use them to locate accessories centrally to the table in the future. They get dropped into these two holes and held in with a slug of hot melt glue. A few more drops of hot glue to protect the wiring and also to diffuse the light from the charge circuit board's LEDs to the outside of the case. The turntable bearing is really simple to assemble. I simply place the bearing cage over the turntable top, add ball bearings into the holes and temporarily secure with low stick masking tape, then carefully lower it into the base and simply pull the masking tape out. And another quick test, seems to be working well with the top installed. Now to hold the whole thing together with a single M4 bolt. I also printed these sides which I found on the Bamboo Lab online models. All credit to the creator, link in the description, they look awesome. I did modify them slightly so there is an edge on the back and printed a nice long hinge to connect two of them together. The hinge uses a piece of filament as the pivot pin, melted into place at both ends. One mistake I made when gluing everything together was not checking the orientation of the two panels. They ended up interfering with each other. At this point I could not be bothered to redo them and simply cut some material away with a sharp knife to remove the interference. The panels are translucent, enough so that they can be illuminated from the back and produce some great results. The last feature is the USB-C charging. The LEDs diffuse nicely out of the side of the turntable, red whilst charging and then blue when finished. All in all, with the panels, lighting and turntable, I think the results are fantastic. Please let me know what you think in the comments below, don't forget to like or dislike, share and subscribe. See you in the next one.